This is Twit. And finally, CES would not be CES without all the spectacular other stuff. And joining us to talk about all that other stuff is Allison Sheridan from podfeet.com. Welcome to the show, Allison. Hi, Megan. How are you doing? <laughs> all right. So I'm doing great. And per Jason. Hello. <laughs> I know you just <laughs> literally just drove in uh, from Vegas. Corner. And boy, are your arms tired. <laughs> that didn't work. No, that did not work. Oh. Anyway. Uh, so pretend that you're Oprah and tell us some of your favorite things. <laughs> All right. So um, I like to do some of the more offbeat stuff, not the big uh, flashy stuff. There's a projection screen called Miraviz that looks really interesting. It allows two viewers to watch two completely different shows at the same time. So you set up two normal projectors and they look at the uh, at, or they point at the screen and using what I can only presume is prisms in layers. And they've down at the photon level. They're very excited about it. It reflects back directly to that viewer. So the, the use case for that might be that uh, you some kids or Megan wants to watch cartoons on one side and somebody else wants us to watch a World War II document documentary. <laughs> you could watch them both at the same time sitting side by side on the couch. The, the other uh, use case is for like first per person shooter games where I understand I don't play those, but I understand that you like to do split screen. And if you're doing a first person shooter, you can see what the other person's doing. But this way, you'd both be on the same screen and you can't see what the other person is doing. Oh, I like that. Not only do you not see what the other person is doing, it's like you're facing your opponent head on. You're both kind of facing. <laughs> oh, I like that a lot. That yeah. Really yeah. Neat. It's it, the other thing is it's super bright. You would think that maybe it was dim because it was doing two layers or something like that, you know, that it would you'd get half or something, but it's not. It's really bright. It's brighter than a regular uh, screen. Okay. Well, of course, CES would not be complete without uh, toothbrush or toaster technology. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you, you checked out some toothbrush technology. Tell us about <laughs> the, uh, the Colibri. Well, Colibri makes a toothbrush called Magic, M-A-G-I-K, and it's an augmented reality toothbrush, like she said. Um, a dentist named Holly Hasegawa demonstrated it to us, and while she's fake brushing her teeth, she was uh, on screen. You could see bubbles bouncing around as the child was doing their toothbrushing, and they got all this uh, different visual feedback to show that they were succeeding, and it was showing them where on their teeth they had not yet brushed. And it's sort of like, you know, and it, heck, doing the, uh, the Touch ID thumbprint where you're trying to get all the little spots to show. It was like that, watching her do it. And uh, that was that was really, really cool, I thought. And then it sends a re report to the parents so you can reward them based on how well they did. And I thought that was, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought it was an, an interesting way to do it. You know, as a modern parent, I will say that one of my frustrations is, is resisting the the draw towards the technology and and the toothbrush is like the, one of the last places that I can assume that my my child is just going to brush their teeth and not be glued into some piece of technology. This is I mean this is a tough one. Well, I get I get both sides of this one, but it's yeah. a little weird for me. I know, like if you have a child that resists brushing mm. teeth and you don't know if they've done it and you don't like, let me smell your breath. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the idea of getting a report that my child has brushed his or her teeth. Sure. Sure. <laughs> well, uh, maybe Jason would like this better. Uh, how about infrared Li-Fi? This is uh, infrared light Wi-Fi. It's not Wi-Fi, but it's Li-Fi. It's an, uh, they demonstrated a lamp, and I'm using lamp in, uh, in quotes here, but I guess it is sending light, so it's a lamp. It sends infrared light in a collimated beam down to a sensor that you have on your uh, plugged into USB onto your laptop. And I watched them do this. They had I confirmed there was no Wi-Fi turned on, and yet they were able to navigate navigate to podfeet.com. Of course, I made them do that, and um, it was it was high speed. And they were they were able to. They also explained that it gives you uh, can have much higher speeds than Wi-Fi can. Less radiation, if you think that that's a scary thing. And uh, more importantly, it's highly secure because light can't go through opaque things. So light can't go through walls. So nobody can be doing uh, war driving outside your house, for example. Oh, interesting. So this is a, it's a desktop accessory that basically beams internet directly to your machine and nowhere else because it's based on the light that it's projecting down. Is that right? Right, right. And think oh, of it for businesses, cool. probably not for regular humans yet, but maybe someday. Yeah. Why not for regular humans? It's too expensive. Well, I think so right now. I mean, it's just kind of just getting started. That would that was my assumption anyway. I like that. What about telepresence? Because you <laughs> sent us a video, and uh, it, was, it was a little little out there, a little but creepy. I, I, I yeah, a little creepy. <laughs> I, it's just it's just strange to see someone you knows 
face like <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> describe it disembodied I suppose and 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 you know able to make you say yes or no by shaking your head with their finger um <laughs> Well, the video that's being shown right here is after the fact, um, a company called Bellis uh, 3D took 15 <laughs> seconds for me to rotate my face and made a three, 3D facial scan. And the thing is amazing. I mean, it looks just like me. And yeah. you can see Steve, he's trying to make me agree with him about something. He's nodding my head up and down at the mask. <laughs> um, there's also a light bulb there. And I wish we had grabbed that, but you can grab that and move it around and change the lighting on the mask. And then you can have it, you know, have that mask printed out. I'm not quite sure what the oh. use case is for regular people, but I mean, you could make masks of yourself and make everybody at your party look like you. I'm not, not really sure. Could I use it to break into your iPhone? Oh, that's a good question. No, everybody knows that doesn't work with Face ID. Oh. <laughs> but it, the camera is actually on pre-order now and it was uh, 500 bucks. So it's not a crazy amount, but the speed was the main thing. I mean, it was literally 15 seconds. I turned my head to the left, I turned it to the right and she guided me how fast to go and boom, it was done. It was really, really cool. Okay, so I, I need to ask you about the Spartan underwear. <sighs> Oh, I thought Jason <laughs> skipped over that one. He did. That's why I have to ask you about it. <laughs> I guess we're going to talk about Spartan underwear. Okay. Well, these two guys are standing in, in the middle of one of the show floors and they're wearing boxer shorts with, with kind of nylon pants or, you know, like uh, fake leggings kind of things. And they said, our tagline is saving humanity. And with Spartan underwear, the problem it solves is there's there's been problems found with a lot of... Uh, well, actually, I don't know whether this has been proven or not, but if you're worried about radiation perhaps making you not be able to have uh, father children in the future, these are boxer shorts that have aluminum fibers wor woven into them, <laughs> and they basically create a Faraday cage to protect your your reproductive organs. A, fer a Faraday cage for down there. Yep, yeah. Faraday cage underpants. Okay. Uh, I know you traveled to CES with your husband, Steve. Did he try them out? No, they did not have try on model. I mean, I'm sure, Bad. sure that Steve would have had had that been the opportunity. Um, they're machine washable. Um, I forget how much they cost. They were fairly expensive. Uh, not not too bad. But um, the thing I understand is that most of the problem with putting a laptop in your lap is actually heat. And I don't think now it's aluminum. Maybe it would heat it up even more. I'm not sure. <laughs> I just don't know what to say about this one. Uh, so, okay, one of my <laughs> moving on from underwear. Um, one of my predictions about CES, and it, actually, in in retrospect, it was a very safe prediction. I would I would guess, but tell me if I'm right. Was that that IoT is such is is so much more mainstream known at this point that there would be a ton of of very you know very much so unheard of. Uh, hardware manufacturers creating IoT devices uh, around everything, whether it's necessary or not. Did you see a lot of that more than previous years? This year, is yeah. this a trend that, that we're like firmly in the middle of right now? Yeah, it got really hard. Uh, my opening question was always, so what differentiates you? Because it all started to look alike. I mean, the light bulbs and all that. Um, if Anything, the, probably the biggest change was that uh, how much scale there was. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. I, was, I was specifically told not to say <laughs> no, that. No, no, just don't tell her to order diamonds. That's all I ask, Alice. No diamonds for for you. Okay. Um, the uh, so the the A lady was basically built into absolutely everything. For instance, I was at the GE booth and they had this beautiful uh, uh, lamp or what do you call it? Um, lighting fixture for your ceiling and she was built into that she was built into the to into fans she was built into humidifiers she was built into um i, I mean it, just everything uh makeup mirrors uh th th she was absolutely in everything they talked about <laughs> google now quite a bit and and there were little men running around in google now suits they they were white suits with like colored dots on them but i didn't he see a lot of specifics about what they were using for that but uh Absolutely everywhere was the A-Lady built into everything. And all I could keep thinking of is she's inside the home. So <laughs> She's calling from inside. I really like Amazon's A-Lady. I think that's the term that we should use going forward. I that actually stole that me. from Joe Duganzik, by the way, of uh, Smarter Home Life. Who's that been on works really well. Mm -hmm. It rolls off the tongue. Yeah. I like it. The A-Lady. 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 That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did we miss anything, uh, anything big that, that you you feel you need to uh, enlighten us 
any more well, underwear? One of, the, one of the single biggest ones was, well, let's talk about ears instead. Okay. Um, there's a company called Eargo, uh, eargo.com, and they've built this hearing aid that has tiny little medical grade silicon fibers. So think of it, it looks like a little tiny sea anemone actually. And you shove it in your ear and it is invisible. You cannot see this. The guy that I was interviewing actually had it in his ear the whole time. I didn't notice. I kind of suspected he had it on. But when I turned and looked directly into his ear, I still couldn't see it. Um, these things apparently are so comfortable that they had to put a sticker in the box that you're supposed to put on your shower to remind you to take it off when you get in the shower because it'll it'll wreck it. And so there, uh, it's got an 18 hour battery life. People wear them all day. One of the big problems with hearing aids is really uncomfortable. So this is a, a, a great solution because they're so uh, comfortable. 18 hour battery life comes in a really sleek charging case. You pop them in there and recharge them and you you get four days of charging uh, or the charging case will cover you for four days. And uh, so the price is not bad. It's like $2,000, which sounds like a lot, but a lot of hearing aids go for up to $4,000. And um, they have a little tiny plastic uh, rod that sticks out or I don't know what it's made of, clear plastic. And it's got a little tiny ball on it so you can grab it with your fingers in order to pull it out because you can't see it. It's way down inside. Um, it's wow. specifically for age-related hearing loss. Wow, that is a that is an interesting looking uh, device. I don't think I've ever yeah. seen anything like that. It, it, it looks like something out of Star Trek that's mm -hmm. going to kill yeah. you. <laughs> Apparently, they were fly fishing and they got the idea for what it would look like. But it's just these little rubbery uh, little fibers like, that sort of hold it into your ear. Yeah. That was probably the neatest thing. Uh, the best part of the show for uh, for Steve was uh, he actually got in front of the camera instead of me. He was able to to interview a gentleman from the Johnson Space Center about NASA, the space launch system, and the work that they've been doing on the Orion crew capsule. So SLS is uh, crewed, crewed deep space travel to and beyond the moon, including Mars. And the Orion crew capsule, is they've been doing testing of the heat shield and the parachute for parachute system for reentry. And um, they're looking at their first test, test launch in 2019. That will be uncrewed, uh, but uh, they're looking at Mars in 20, 2030. So uh, wow. I might even be alive by then. We can do this, all of us. <laughs> It'll be a group trip. Allison, thank you so much for joining us. All of Allison's work can be found at podfeet.com. You also appeared on DTNS from the uh, CES floor. Is there any yes, other- with Patrick Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, uh, is there any other place we should point people to? Oh, just follow me on Twitter. At podfeet on Twitter. Thank you so much, Allison. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> Welcome back home.